Uh, welcome everybody. This is the second Handelsblatt webinar on monetizing car data. Our speaker today is Matan Tesler, VP of Product at Autonomo, one of the leading service platforms for car data. Our topic today is how to get from engineering-oriented car data to service-ready. If you'd Thank like to you. ask any questions, please use the question box in the bottom right corner of your screen. Questions will be answered during and after the main lecture. And without further ado, Matan, the stage is yours. Thank you, uh, Jens, and uh, hi, everyone. Um, my name is Matan Tesler. I'm the VP product at uh, Autonomo, and I'm very excited to be here today. Um, I'll be talking about transforming engineering-oriented car data to service-ready data, and let's uh, start. So let me paint a very nice future for you, where finding parking is never a problem, and you always know when and where to charge your EV. You never get stuck on the side of the road because you catch the problem just before it happens. All of this and more can be boosted using car data. At Autonomo, we split such use cases into personal and aggregate. Personal services generate value to the consumer, and this can be pay how you drive insurance models, it could be concierge services, or a parking app. Aggregate services make cities run smarter, power traffic or mapping services, and more. Many cars today are data centers on wheels. Such a car can generate up to 25 gigabytes of data every hour with over 150 different data parameters. Such parameters can be speed and heading, tire pressure, door status, external temperature, or environmental parameters captured by ADAS. And there is a lot more data coming. According to an SBD research, by 2025, practically every new car sold will be connected. And here's where this data is coming from today. Um, there are existing aftermarket connectivity solutions, um, OBD2 dongles, lag boxes, and there is also embedded connectivity with many of the connected cars. <clears throat> there are a lot of opportunities with this data, uh, but there are also many challenges that we should all be aware of. So car data was initially designed for cars and for car engineers not for uh, not to power services and it's really big data it varies a lot it varies by make and model uh, we can see several formats within the same oem and across different regions for example different sensors um, will measure different standards and will have different accuracy levels. So much like different watches uh, that will display the time with different accuracy, different sensors will measure and calculate different values in the same way. Car data also varies by format and unit. Um, for fueling data, for example, we will see um, this data being reported with liters, gallons, different representations for liters and gallons, and also percentage formats and units. This data also has many errors. Um, it can be related to connectivity issue, to a connectivity issue due to a tunnel, for example, but it can also be due to an error in a specific sensor 
while all other sensors work perfectly. And it oftentimes needs additional context. So when we look at this message right now on this slide, you can read it, but not always make use of it. But if, if it would have more context, you should be able to understand what you're seeing. Here, in this case, we can understand that it's, it's a car parked in Washington Street, Brooklyn, New York. Now let's talk about data privacy. Car data is BII and it belongs to the driver. So you have to make sure that you comply with all the different regulations, including APPI, GDPR, CCPA, and more. So we have talked about the challenges that we see in car data today, in raw car data. How do we transform this data into service-ready data? We will go, go over this checklist uh, for data transformation processes. Um, I'll cover data normalization, cleansing, enrichment, data aggregation, triggers, but also enabling easy access to this data. I've mentioned the different variations that we've seen in, in this data earlier. Uh, I've, mentioned for, I've mentioned format and units, make and model, and sensor type. Such data in its raw format really cannot be used by any service. Data normalization creates a single language or a dictionary that represents car data. And this can actually be used by different services. Data cleansing. Data cleansing may sound simple, but it's not trivial at all. Data cleansing, cleansing is an ongoing process. You can see a new error today that, you di that didn't exist yesterday. So you need to constantly analyze, identify new types of errors, and clean your data. Let me tell you what we are seeing at Autonomo. Um, for some data sources, we see 30% of the data points that do not make sense. And we're actively cleaning errors from over 150 million data points every week. So you normalize the data, you cleanse the data, and now it's time to enrich the data. So car data does not always make sense. We said it before, and by enriching it using additional data sets, you can now make use of it. For example, um, in this case, reverse geocoding allows you to transform lat and long into a human readable location. This can be applied to many services such as parking apps or traffic management solutions. Another example would be uh, transforming the VIN into make and model using a VIN decoder type of enrichment. Now let's talk about aggregations. Um, it's a topic that I'm really excited about. Um, we process 2.6 billion data points every day. However, if you think of different services, oftentimes those services need very specific data. By using aggregations, such as a trip aggregation, they can get the data that they are looking for while saving the huge time, effort, and cost which is associated with processing the entire data set. So if you're looking to analyze traffic patterns in rush hour, using trips will allow you to speed up your time to market, 
and reduce significantly reduce uh, develop, uh, development costs. Triggers and actions um, also provide, they provide another efficiency lever. So if your service provides value whenever a certain event occurs, you don't need to process all the irrelevant data that does not apply to that event. When the event occurs, you want it to trigger a notification to your service, which will then allow you or the driver to take action. Here's an example for a low battery event that prompts an EV owner to charge her car. We see here 16% um, battery status, and you don't need to process all the data that represents a much higher battery status than what we see here. This data and all those services are great, but they can't be delivered without respecting drivers and, and their privacy and complying with privacy regulations. For personal use cases, uh, you need a solution for data sharing consent management. And for aggregate use cases, you need a solution for blurring the data that uh, so it will not expose PII. <clears throat> we recently surveyed consumers in Europe about car data services and privacy. And 75% of the people said they want to be able to see their data and how it's being used. So as part of complying with the different regulations, you would want to offer drivers full transparency and control over which data they are sharing and with whom. Such a consent management solution also ensures the OEM complies with the regulation while offering value-added services to their vehicle owners. Now let's talk about aggregate data. Different services require different data. And you'd like to get the data you need for your service while other data attributes will be blurred. For example, a parking app would need an accurate location data, but does not need to know the car or see where it is going next. While if we talk about media research, um, we would want to see a continuous vehicle ID, even if it's, uh, it will not be the VIN, but it will be continuous, um, at least for a short while, but it does not require accurate location data. So we have super high quality data that can power our service but we still need to be able to access it. The right, API, um, the right API will offer simplicity, flexibility, and ease of integration. It will allow you to get the data, to get the data in a clear format with all the right filters for your service in a single API call. So I've talked about the API, um, but not every person can use it, and not every person is a developer. And you want to make this data available to everyone in your team. So just to recap, um, here are the key parts of the process. Um, data normalization, data cleansing, enrichment, aggregations, triggers, and offering easy access to the data. All these um, steps within the process allow you to transform engineering-oriented car data into service record. And my key takeaways from you, for you here are, first, car data has unlimited potential. 
and can be applied to a diversity of use cases. It requires complex data transformation and regulator compliance to become service ready. To use the highest quality car data and reduce time to market, partnering with the data services platform. Let me tell you a little bit about who we are. Um, Autonomo is an automotive data services platform, and we're experts in the checklist I just talked about. Um, we've created over 330 billion miles per year uh, from 20 million cars. We process 2.6 billion data points every day. We're engaged with 15 OEMs, and I'm speaking to you right now from Herzliya, Israel, our headquarters, and we also have people in the team uh, in, the, in Europe, in the US, and in Japan. That's all I have on my side, and uh, I'd love to take some questions. Matan, thank you very much for your lecture. Uh, we have a question here. How do you make sure personal privacy and persuasive usage of car mobility data? I think that's a, that's a great question. And, and I've talked before about the different regulations that um, um, apply to car data. Uh, and what we are seeing is that every different region and country have their own regulation. And when thinking about car data, we need to remember that the driver owns the data and it's PII, so we need to respect it. Um, so what we have built is a full consent hub that allows uh, any party um, that is part um, of the value of the service that is being offered to the driver um, to respect that, to be compliant with the regulation and help and provide the driver full transparency and control over the, their data. So for example, uh, allowing you to enable sharing specific data attributes with a specific service, but not share anything with another one. And if you'd like, you can see exactly which data is shared with each service and you are able to revoke um, the access to this data uh, whenever you decide. Okay, the next question is, where can I find information uh, from which OEMs you work with or Autonomous works with? That's a great uh, question. So um, we are engaged with um, multiple OEMs. Um, we cannot share all the um, all the names of, of these OEMs. Um, we have recently um, published our relationship with uh, our partnership with Mitsubishi. We are engaged with um, with BMW and with Daimler. Um, so those are the ones that I can share. We've uh, previously, um, uh, as I previously mentioned, we are engaged with 15 OEMs, but we are also engaged with other players in the market, such as Microsoft um, and Evis Budget and other players. All right, next question. Uh, do you have a time plan and how do you plan to get even more OEMs on board and how to get their data into your network or your platform? Um, this is not something that um, we can share right now, but we are um, we are working very closely with um, multiple multiple OEMs, and I'm very optimistic about uh, us being able to share some of the partnerships that we are now forming uh, with um, uh, several key players in the industry. Thank you very much. Um, can you tell us something about uh, the? Um what Autonomo can offer to uh, car dealers in particular? I think that's, an, uh, that's a very interesting topic. And I think that part of the 
connected car, what connected car brings to, um, to the automotive world is enabling many opportunities to engage um, with the driver beyond um, just when the, when, when the person is driving the car. And the experience of owning a car does not necessarily need to end uh, when you uh, switch off the ignition. So when you own a car, you own it 24 seven. And uh, you can get an, the experience, a good experience of owning a specific vehicle um, 24 seven. And I think that the dealerships have a unique position uh, to engage with the driver and with the vehicle owner. Um, and because they have this relationship with the driver, they have the option to offer all the value added services and actually explain what those are um, to the buyer. So I, I believe that dealerships have a unique opportunity to strengthen their relationship with drivers by using by by offering value added services um, when people visit visit the dealership. All right. Another question is: uh, Do we receive all data from an OEM once they join Autonomo, or just specific data sets? So Autonomo is a, is is a cloud platform. Uh, we don't have any hardware on the car. Um, we are connected, we are integrated with the cloud, uh, with the OEM through their cloud, and therefore the OEM has full flexibility to decide which data they are sharing and for which use cases. Um, so the OEM has the option to decide how, which, which value-added services they want to offer and which data they uh, can share in order to offer these um, value-added services and then um, enable the drivers to actually grant access to this, to this data and allow Autonomo to share it with specific services. Uh, so the OEM has all the control on which value-added services they would like to offer the driver, but then the driver itself or the vehicle owner has um, all the flexibility to decide the actual data that they want to share with each of the services. Sorry, my microphone was muted. Matan, another question is, uh, is there, sorry, uh, in which use cases do you see the most potential for database business models? So, I think that's a very interesting question. We've, well, I, I, I had a slide earlier that shows um, 10 or more different use cases that um, offer clear value um, and are, uh, can be powered by car data. I think that um, there are different motivations um, for car data, for someone to share car data. Um, and it depends on, uh, in the viewer. So for vehicle owners, personal services that provide added value to the experience of owning a car, um, those are the most valuable opportunity, opportunities in my view, because at the end of the day, once your car is connected, you can get a great experience 24 seven, it's, uh, it will allow you to have, um, to always uh, charge your EV um, when, just before, just when, when you actually need it and never uh, have range anxiety. It will allow you to wake up in the morning and find your vehicle clean 
uh, in your garage and it will allow you to save money on insurance because you drive safely. So in terms of value added to the driver, I think that personal services um, um, of, offer a great deal of opportunity here. I think that on the aggregate side, there are some use cases that increase safety and improve traffic and reduce traffic loads, which will impact people's lives. Um, so eventually every service, whether it's aggregate or personal, that will improve people's life at the end uh, can benefit a lot already today by using car data. And I hope it answered the questions. The question. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, some of the uh, attendees are asking, can you be more specific about the type of data available on your platform and the kind of services that are available on your platform? So we have a, we have a very long list of, um, of data attributes that are available um, through Autonomo. It's a list of over 200 attributes, so I will not be able to uh, describe everything right now. By the way, everything is available in uh, docs.autonomo.io. So you can visit our documentation website and uh, find it uh, there. And you can also follow up with me and my email will be on the next slide. And I'll be, ha I'll be happy to assist with um, anything. Um, in terms of services, uh, we, see, we see both aggregate services um, um, offering better mapping solutions uh, based on on car data. Uh, this includes traffic data, but also road signs data, for example. Uh, and we also see personal services in use case in in industries such as insurance, uh, concierge services fueling, parking, um, and more. So I think there is a high, there is a diverse set of services that, that are already running um, on connected car data and they are powered by Autonomous. All right, one last question remaining. Do you um, share the presentation after the webinar? Or do you share a link to the webinar or something like that so people can follow up on this uh, presentation? So I, th I believe that this is recorder, recorded and we will share a link of the recording. And I hope it works. All right. So this concludes our webinar for today. If you'd like to know more, please visit our website at uh, www.monetizing-cardata.com or the website of our partner www.autonomo.com or write us an email. And thank you for attending and have a good day and goodbye. Thank you.